Alright guys, we're back here with part two. I've done the ultrasonic cleaning and when I was done with that I blew off all the parts with uh, compressed air. So now I'm just putting back together the carburetor. Next thing we need to do is drop uh, this little Phillips head screw in here. And you just want to snug that up. And then we're going to adjust our idle adjustment screw. I'm going to back that out. I had to put that in because I couldn't get the screw that was underneath of it out. And you know, if I take the time to clean these things, I like to get everything apart. And I might have to adjust these a little bit later. Alright, now we're going to put in our main jets. The uh, end with the longer end without the hole goes in first here. Just drop it in. And then we're going to carefully thread in the main jet. You want the side with the slotted end facing out. That way you can use a screwdriver to tighten that up. So we're just going to take a screwdriver, turn that in gently until it seats. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and we're going to attach it to the float. It just hangs on here sort of like that. And once you have that hanging on there, you're going to take your carb body and you're going to line up the needle with the hole right where the seat is and gently lower that in. The last thing you need to do is put in the fulcrum pin and that will hold your float in place. So I'm just taking the fulcrum pin and I'm just going to slip it through here. should go in fairly easily until it comes out the other side sort of like that. And you want to make sure that your needle is opening and closing alright. Alright, the last thing we need to do is take our bowl and we're going to attach that to the bottom of the carburetor. You want to make sure that this nut is facing out towards you and the fuel line is pointing to the right. That way in the future if you need to drain gas out of the bowl the nut here, the drain nut, will be facing you, make it a lot easier. And then I'm just going to tighten that with a 10 millimeter wrench. Alright, I just got done draining the gas out of this. So the next thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hook up the uh, governor link linkage to the second hole here on the throttle. And uh, I'm going to hook up the spring as well to the first hole just like that alright so hopefully you can see how those are connected the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fuel line and reconnect it I drained all the fuel out of this because I'm going to start with new fuel so that goes back on there you want to make sure your clamp seats All right, the next thing that you want to do is you want to take your air filter cover and you want to put the big bolts through there, 10 millimeter. Flip those over and hold it. The next step, you're going to mount this uh, metal plate. You want to get the screws to go through those mounting holes. There's one gasket in between the two. Then from there, uh, there's a gasket that goes on the back side of this metal plate. So we're going to get that gasket and we're going to make sure that the atmospheric hole lines up. Otherwise your engine will leak fuel when you're done shutting it down. All the fuel will leak out of the tank if you don't have that atmospheric, if you have that vent hole clogged or covered because you have a gasket on backwards. Next up, we're going to take the carburetor. We're going to feed it all the way through these mounting bolts. Carefully work it on there. Everything should fit pretty well. Then we have the metal heat plate that has a gasket on both sides. Once again, you want to make sure that your vent holes are lining up properly. That'll go right on there like that. And then the next thing that you have is a plastic spacer that looks like this and a gasket that's square on the white side or the back side. So what you want to do is you want to put the round side towards the metal plate and then you want to take this plastic thing and the bolts and we're going to line it right up with these mounting holes on the engine. 
All right, so now I'm starting to snug up these bolts, and you just want to keep in mind that there's an atmospheric or a, a vacuum hose back here that needs to be hooked up to the back of the filter box. Right now is a good time to do that before you crank down those bolts. So I'm just going to reach in and carefully get it. Unfortunately, it's sort of hard to show on film. All right, so the last thing that we have to do is just get all our bolts mounted and connected. I like to tighten them up just a little bit at a time, making sure to be careful that they're all lining up properly. Snug them up by hand, and then I'll take my 10 millimeter ratchet and make sure that they're all just slightly, slightly snug. You don't want to over tighten it. A lot of these parts are plastic, so we'll get this tightened up, and then I need to add fuel. and the air cover cleaner so we'll do that first thing that goes on here is the filter a little bit of dust on it from my garage and then we're going to drop the cover in here the bottom hooks go on there the top latches snap together and i'm going to make sure that my fuel is on we're going to add some fuel and we'll see if this thing will start. If it starts, might need a little bit of an adjustment because I wasn't quite sure where I set the air hole on that one spring loaded screw. All right, I just got done uh, adding a little bit of oil to this thing, so uh, we'll see if she'll start. Joe? Sounds good. I'm gonna try and cut with it.